Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at the bones of the arm from the shoulder to the wrist. On this slide, what we see is the bone inside the upper arm. This is called the humerus. And on the left side, I've got a left and a right humerus seen from the back, from the posterior side. And on the right side over here, I've got a left and a right humerus seen from the front, from the anterior. Now, on the humerus, there are several structures that you do need to know, several markings. So let's start at the top of this photo. This rounded portion that we see at the top is called the head. The head is what attaches to the scapula at the shoulder. Now just below the head, there is a ridge that runs kind of diagonally. Um, sometimes it's a little more visible than others, but this is called the anatomical neck. The anatomical neck is a very faint ridge that runs diagonally just below the smooth part that is the head. Now we also have another neck when we're looking at the humerus. This part right here where we start to get into the diaphysis, the shaft of the humerus, this part is called the surgical neck. The surgical neck is of importance because this is a common spot for breaks of the upper arm to occur. And again, that is just the part where it starts to become narrow, right where the epiphysis and the diaphysis kind of join. Now also up at the top portion next to the head, there are a couple of other features here to know, and these are called tubercles. And it might be kind of hard to see in this picture, but right here on the posterior side, there is a larger swollen area. This is called the greater tubercle. And on the front, on the anterior portion, there is a bit of a smaller swollen area. This is called the lesser tubercle. So greater is more towards the posterior, lesser is more towards the anterior, but they're named greater and lesser just because the greater is larger. Now down at the other end, this is towards your elbow. There's quite a bit going on down here at this end. On both the posterior and the anterior surface, right in the middle, there is an indentation. On the posterior side, the indentation is significantly larger. Um, I tell students it's the one that's big enough to put the tip of your thumb into. On the anterior side, it's much smaller, and most people could possibly fit the tip of their pinky into it, but their thumb is generally much, much too large. So that's one way that you can kind of orient yourself, which is the anterior versus posterior side. Well, on the posterior side, that larger indentation, the one that you can fit your thumb into, is called the olecranon fossa. Remember, fossa is an indentation. Something often will fit into a fossa. We will see what that is on the next slide. But the larger of the indentations, the one on the posterior side, is the olecranon fossa. On the anterior side, the smaller indentation is called the coronoid fossa. And we'll see what fits into that on the next slide also. Just beneath the fossa on either side, 
there is this kind of large structure right here. It's pretty smooth. This structure is called the trochlea. And it's got a very, very sharp edge on one side of it. The trochlea is going to fit into one of the bones of the lower arm, which we will see in just a minute. Right next to the trochlea is something that is almost a perfect sphere. This rounded structure is called the capitulum. And you can distinguish it from the part of the trochlea because like I said, the trochlea has got a very sharp edge to it, whereas the capitulum is very, very rounded. Like I said, it's almost a perfect sphere. Now, capitulum means little head because it resembles the head of the humerus. Cap it. Think about what happens when you decapitate someone. You have cut their head off. Cap it means head. Ulum means little. So the capitulum means little head. On either side of the humerus, down here at the bottom, we have epicondyles. There's a lateral and a medial epicondyle. Well, if we go back up here to the head, remember we said the head is what meets with a part of the scapula at the shoulder. So the head is the medial side, which means down here, the epicondyle that's on the same side as the head is the medial epicondyle. And the other side, the side that does not have the head, that's a lateral, so these are the lateral epicondyles. Now the humerus is one of the bones that you need to know right and left. So like we've done several times now, if you know three points and know which direction they should face when in anatomical position, then you can figure out if it is a right or a left. The way that I work with the humerus is I think the end with the head goes up. That's the upper part of your upper arm. The head itself faces medially. It needs to connect to your shoulder. And as we saw earlier, the larger of those indentations, the olecranon fossa, that's the back of your elbow. So just know the end with the head up, the head faces your shoulder, it faces medially, and the olecranon fossa faces back, faces posterior. And that way you can figure out which is right and which is left on the humerus. Here we see the two bones of the lower arm, the forearm. This is the radius and the ulna, and I've only got one view of each because you do not need to know right ulna, left ulna, right radius, left radius. You only need to know radius and ulna. So first, before we start learning the parts, the markings on the radius and the ulna, let's look to see how can we tell them apart. Well, the one here on the right, we can see it kind of looks like a wrench, but more importantly, it's kind of shaped like the letter U, the first letter of the word ulna. So the one that has a U at the top is the ulna. The other one that has this very flat part, like the head of a nail, this is the radius. So let's first look at the radius and see the parts or the markings that we need to know. The flat spot, and if you have one of these in front of you, you'll see the top of it really is very flat, like the head of a nail. This is the head of the radius. 
just beneath the head, this part right here is called the radial tuberosity. And down at the opposite end, this part that comes to a point is called the styloid process. Now, the head faces upward. This joins with the elbow. And down here, the styloid process is what forms your wrist bone right next to your thumb. So when you feel your wrist right below your thumb, that little knot that you feel is the styloid process of the radius. Now let's look over here on the right at the ulna. This U-shaped spot that we looked at a moment ago, that is what the trochlea from the humerus fits into. And when you bend and straighten your elbow, all you are doing is moving this part back and forth across the trochlea. So this spot is called the trochlear notch. The trochlear notch is what the trochlea fits into. This upper part right here is called the olecranon process. And when you hold your arm straight, the olecranon process fits into the olecranon fossa of the humerus. When you bend your elbow, when you flex your lower arm, the coronoid process fits into the coronoid fossa on the humerus. Now it's very hard to see in this picture, but right here, there is an indentation. It looks like somebody kind of stuck their finger in some wet clay and it's sunk in a little bit. This is called the radial notch and the head of the radius fits into the radial notch up by your elbow joint. Now lastly, at the opposite end, we have another point right here, and this is the styloid process. Just like we saw a styloid process on the radius, there is a styloid process on the ulna. This is also a wrist bone, but the styloid process of the ulna is the wrist bone that you feel just below the side of your hand where your pinky finger, your small finger is found. So when you hold both sides of your wrist and you feel those two wrist bones, what you're feeling next to your thumb is the styloid process of the radius. What you feel on the side where your pinky is, is the styloid process of the ulna. And again, you do not need to know right and left radius or ulna. You just need to know them by name.